Okay, good evening. Welcome to Torah Studies. This week is Parshas Emel. The topic we're learning today, do it because it's the right thing to do. Give selflessly, even if you get, even if you get nothing out of it. Very, very important lesson, what we are going to learn tonight from the this week's a very interesting part in this week's Torah portion. This is a, in the Parsha, the Torah talks about a mitzvah that is not very common these days. It is a mitzvah that has to do with the agriculture in Eretz Yisrael back in the days. It's called the mitzvah of Leket Shikha Peya. What are we talking about? The mitzvah in Eretz Yisrael, that when you have a field, you got to make sure to help the poor people. If you grow some crops in the field, there's things that you need to leave on the side of the field. There is things that's called peya, like the payas of the, the payas we wear over here, the sideburns, is also the payah of the field. You have to live for the poor people. And there is the leket. Leket is when there is uh, uh, things that fall. And uh, when you have when you have uh, things that fall, pieces that fall as you, as you harvest, you don't, there's different laws that you have to leave it for the poor people, depending how much, how many. If it's a little, you leave it for the poor people. It's all the details in the Mishnah and the Lacha. And then you have Shikha. If you have the bundles and you forget a bundle in the field, again, you should not go back to collect the bundle, you should leave it and let the poor people enjoy the food. What is interesting is where this law is placed in this parsha. And that is what we're going to focus on and learn some amazing lessons from the placement of this law in this week's Torah portion. So let's see inside. Okay. Okay, here it is. So this is the, the verse that we have in the Pasha. The Taylor says, when you reap the harvest of your land. You shall not completely remove the corner of your field during your harvesting. And you shall not gather up the gleanings of your harvest. Rather, you shall leave these for the poor person and for the stranger. I am the Lord, your God. Okay. And we have the Maimonides explains more in details what this law is referring to. There's the Maimonides as follows. Akoyter, so they use the Maimonides, when a person harvests the field, when a person harvests the field, they should not harvest the entire field instead they should leave a small portion of the standing grains at the end of the field, as the verse states, do not completely remove the grain in the corners of your field when you're, when you're when reaping. This prohibition applies to one who reaps and one who uproots the grains left standing in, uh, is, is referred to as paya. That's called a paya, like the side. Similarly, with, re with regard to leket, when one harvests or binds sheaves, 
they should not gather the stalks that fall during the harvest. Instead, leave them for the poor. As it, as it is stated, you shall not gather the gleaning of the gleanings of your harvest. Similarly, if a person is binding sheaves of wheat into bundles and forgets one bundle, they may not go back and take it. Okay? The question is, the question is, where is this placed? This law is placed, this pasuk is placed smack in between a whole list of uh, the offerings of the holidays. And the parsha talks about all of the Yom Tovim, the holidays that we need, what type of offering do we bring and so on. And right there in, in, in the middle, it talks about this mitzvah of bringing the, of leaving the leket, the shikha, the things that we have to leave for the poor. What's the connection? What is the connection between these two? And Rashi brings an interesting explanation. We're going to read it inside. Rashi says as follows. Famous commentator, the Rashi. He says, Rav Avdimai taught in the name of Rav Yosef. The Torah places the mitzvahs of Leket, Shikha, and Peya, these three things that we mentioned, in the middle of the discussion of the temple services to teach that fulfilling these mitzvahs properly is equivalent to building the temple and offering sacrifices. That's what Rashi says. In fact, this is not the first time we hear about this, that the doing gemilus chesed, doing kindness is compared to uh, the, the work in the Beis HaMikdash. Here is Oves the Rabbi Nassim, the Medrash tells us, Rabbi Yechanan ben Zakkai was traveling with, uh, from Yerushalayim together with Rabbi Yeshua. When they passed the ruins of the temple, Rabbi Yeshua said, Woe unto us, the place where Israel's sins are forgiven is now destroyed. So worry, Rabbi Yechanan answers him, worry not my son, said Rabbi Yechanan. There is a similar source of forgiveness. What are those? The acts of kindness. So the acts of kindness, when you do kindness, this brings forgiveness. Okay. The question, however, is why? What's the connection? Why is it that the acts of kindness, tzedakah, that is connected with the work of the Beis Amigdash, I mean, we know the famous saying, it says, tefillah is b'makah in karbana is tikno. The prayers. I mean, why not other mitzvahs? Especially the prayers. Prayers were specially made, it says, the, the offering of the... We offer ourselves to Hashem during the prayers. What is, it, what is so special about the acts of kindness? Here in the Talmud that we're going to see now, it says clearly that more, the prayers are more likened to the work in the Beis HaMikdash. Says the Talmud in Brachas, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi said that the prayers were instituted based and the daily offering sacrifices in the Holy Temple. It was taught in the Baraisa in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, why may the morning prayers be recited until noon? Because the daily morning offering may be sacrificed until noon. And why may the afternoon prayer recited until the evening? Because the daily afternoon offering is sacrificed until the evening. And why did they say that the evening prayer is not fixed? It's not kavua. The evening prayer, the mayrif prayer is not really fixed. It's, it's, it's something 
who has not even a chova, it's not even an obligation to think that the Jews took it upon themselves, but it's definitely not fixed. He says, because the burning, what does this correspond to? To the burning of the limbs and the fats of the offerings. And the burning of the limbs and fats of the offerings that were not consumed by the fire on the altar did not occur until the evening. They remain on the altar and were offered continuously throughout the, the entire night. Okay. And so on. He goes on to say, and the same thing is with the prayer of Musaf. And why did the rabbi say that the additional prayer, we have that prayer of Musaf, the additional prayer may be recited all day because the additional offering is brought throughout the entire day. And that's why it is like this. Okay. But again, the question is, why is the kindness, specifically tzedakah, considered equivalent to the temple service? What's so special? Why not the prayers? So in order to understand this, we're going to read a little bit more about what is it, what is it about the offerings, the meaning of the offerings. So there's an interesting uh, Ramban, the Nachmanides explains. He brings a whole interesting explanation about the offerings. How, when a, you know, when a person brings the offering, the Beis Amikdash, there's, we know we have different types of offerings. There's the offerings of Shlamim, people give peace offerings. The more common offering is, we, there's, I mean, among the offerings, we have the, the public offerings, and then we have the private offerings. We have the public daily offerings, which is the Tamich or Shacha, Tamich or Ben Abayim, the offering in the morning and the evening, those are brought in order to bring forgiveness on behalf of the, of the entire Jewish people. Then there is the private offerings. If people committed certain uh, transgressions, specific transgressions, unintentionally, they would bring an offering. So what is it about the offering that, that brings forgiveness? So the Nachmanides, the Ramban, explains here that all of the details that is happening in, in, in the, with the animal, a person really has to pay attention and realize that this is something that should have been done to him. And that itself brings the person to do teshuva, to repent. And that brings the forgiveness. As the Ramban explains, let's uh, we'll see it inside. It says, human function is executed through the, uh, the vehicles of thoughts, speech, and action. That's what we speak about a lot in Tanya about this, the machshava dibiru ma'isa. Those are the three garments of the soul, as they call it. That you think, you speak, and you act. As such, God commanded that when a person sins and brings an offering, they should lay their hands upon the animal. That's called the smicha, you put your hands on the animal. This is mirroring the evil action. Then they verbally confess. You have to do the vidui. You have to confess verbally, mirroring the evil speech. And then you have the machshava, the thoughts. What is the thoughts? Where is this represented? So he says the animal's innards and kidneys are then burned in fire, mirroring those limbs in the human body that are known to be instruments of thoughts and desire in the human being. The animal's legs are burned, mirroring the sinner's hands and feet that did all the work. The animal's blood is then sprinkled upon the altar which is analogous to the blood in the sinner's body. You know, in Hasidus, they, they, they speak also about the blood. The blood is the, the, the passion. Because when you take out the blood and you sprinkle on the altar, it represents is that, that the passion, what you do, when you slaughter an animal, nothing changes, really. When you take out the blood, the, the, all the organs are there. 
So the same thing is with the person when he realizes that the organs that you have, everything what God gave you, doesn't is not necessarily bad. It's not evil, even if it's a physical core, uh, you know, materialistic body. Still, it's not evil. You can use it in a proper way. Take the blood out of the of the materiality, the excitement. This you sprinkle on the altar. So that's another thing he brought down in Chassidus as well. So he continues the Ramban, Nachmanides. So says the Ramban, all of these acts are performed so that the person should realize that they have, that they have sinned against God with body and soul. Really, it should be their blood getting spilled and their body burned were it not for the loving kindness of the creator who took a substitute and the ransom, namely this offering. The animal's blood is in place of the sinner's blood, its life in the place of the sinner's life, and the chief limbs of the offering in place of the chief parts of the sinner's body. These are worthy words that appeal to the heart as do words of Haggadah. So, so the idea of the carbon, the idea of the offering is the idea of giving yourself. Idea of realizing that everything that you have has to be used in a proper way. Machshava, Dibur, Maise, the Alter Rebbe explains, therefore, that the mitzvah of tzedakah has a similar concept. The mitzvah of tzedakah, the charity, is something that the person gives what they earned. And what they earned, they earned, they earned with everything they put in, they invested the, the, the entire being to earn the money that they work hard. People work hard. Maybe not everybody, but some people work hard. Even those who don't work hard for them to make a living, still, they, the money that they use, they can buy a living. They can buy food. They can buy things that they want for their life. And when you take your money and you give it away, when you take your possession and you give it away to someone in need, to something that Hashem commanded you, this is giving, that is why this is the, the correlation between the tzedakah, the giving, and the offering of the sacrifices. Because here you offer everything of yourself to Hashem. Let's see how the Alter Rebbe said, this is a quote from the Tanya. Says the Alter Rebbe. The mitzvah of tzedakah is given disproportionate importance in all of Jewish literature with such statements as shkula keneged kala mitzvahs it is equivalent to all other mitzvahs this is from the Talmud of Basra to wit the, the Jerusalem Talmud uses the term mitzvah without any qualifier as a reference to tzedakah, that's in the Yerushalmi. The whole Talmud Yerushalmi, whenever it says mitzvah, it refers to tzedakah. As was the common practice then. This is because tzedakah is considered to be the most important practical mitzvah. Why is this so? So he says the purpose of every mitzvah is to transform the person and carry over his or her life, very life to God. That's the idea of the mitzvah, to elevate every part of us. Now, there isn't a mitzvah in which the person's life and energy is more invested than the mitzvah of tzedakah. Think about it. With any other mitzvah, only one single part of the person is invested in the, in the action. Think about lulav, Tefillin, 
Well, you do you do a mitzvah with your hand, you eat matzah with your mouth. Every mitzvah is connected with a certain with a certain organ. Okay. With any other mitzvah, only one single part of the person is invested in the action. By contrast, the person invests their entire being into the money that they earn. So when they go, when, when they then go ahead and give it away to tzedakah, their entire being is invested in the mitzvah. But we asked a question before, but what about one who doesn't work for his money? Some people don't work for the money. They have an inheritance, whatever. They won the lottery, whatever they do. I don't want to mention other things, but, <laughs> but a person that has the money, he has the money. How can we argue that they're completely invested in that money? Says Dalta Rebbe, that with that money, they could have bought anything for their own personal use. So by giving it away, they are indeed giving their very life away for God. Thus, our sages state, stated that Sadaka hastens the redemption. For one donation sublimates so much of the donor's energy and life, something that would have been impossible even after many other mitzvahs. So here the Alter Rebbe really touches on, on, on a very important point, that what is this whole idea of the world that says Hashem created this world, what is the purpose? Is that Hashem is Hashem wanted to have a home, a dwelling place in this world. And when we're saying that God wants to dwell in this world, he doesn't want to dwell only in Borough Park or in Crown Heights. He wants to dwell in Sheeps at Bay. <laughs> he wants to dwell in every part of us. Not only in, 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 in the place, in the time of the day that we go in the morning, we put on the filling. Hashem wants to dwell in every part of our life. There's no such thing as, as, as my time, my space. It is all God. Yes, God gave it to us. But he gave it to us in order to make it a place for him. A dear Allah. The way we think, the way we act, everything that we do, Hashem wants to make the entire world. That is what brings Mashiach. So, so therefore, says the, the Alter Rebbe here in the part in the Tanya, that the tzedakah that you give, being that tzedakah, is something that your whole life is invested in. And even, even if you didn't invest your whole life, you can still come and you can still make a life with this. You can still buy food and buy everything what you want for your life. That's why when you give tzedakah, that is what hastens the coming of Mashiach. This is why the Rebbe always insisted to give more and more tzedakah. Every Sunday he would stand out and may, may da, give out dollars to people, to thousands of people to give a bracha and give a dollar. What was the dollar for? To train the people to go give the dollar in tzedakah. And this is why, this explains why the idea of the tzedakah replaces the work in the Beis HaMikdash, being that the Beis HaMikdash, the holy temple, it is something to bring offering to Hashem, and, the, and there's no, nothing else that compares to the tzedakah, the giving the charity, giving, doing kindness. As the Rebbe explains, Says the Rebbe, the comparison of gifts to the poor, to offering sacrifices is obvious. When a person offers a sacrifice, they give something of themselves to God. The same thing occurs when donating gifts to the poor, the donor gives away their possessions to, one, to another person by God's command.
ok? So sacrifices is a person gives something of themselves to God, and the same thing as charity. A donor gives away their possession to another by God's command. However, not everything is smooth. Of, of, of course, you always need to have something. You need to find something to ask questions with. And here, there's an interesting concept, a, a question that comes up when we think about a certain offering, which is called the Korban Eitzim, the offering of the wood. This, we, we spoke about it a few weeks ago, the, the idea of the offering of the woods. What was the offering of the woods? It was, there were certain families, anybody could do it really, but certain families in particular, they were doing this, uh, they would bring the wood and uh, as an offering to the temple. The wood that is used on the altar, the wood that is used on the altar, they would bring for, for people to be able to offer, to bring the offering, to burn their offering on the, on the altar. So this offering of the wood was considered a very, very special offering. Indeed, they made a very special happy occasion when they, when they brought this, this uh, the day of their offerings. They wouldn't, they wouldn't say the, uh, they wouldn't allow to eulogize in those days. It was considered special days for them. However, if you think about an offering of the wood, it doesn't have any of the elements that we just said, the Ramban, the Nachmanides explained so beautifully. The, the different elements, what, what happens when you bring the offering, what you have to think, you have to give over your, your thoughts, your speech, your action, the blood, the, and everything that putting the hands on it, you're, you're saying the vidui, the confessions, and everything that is involved in an offering. Nothing of that is true with the, with the offering of the wood. The wood offering, you just bring a piece, a, a, a bundle of wood, or whatever, a truckload of wood, and you leave it in the in the storage in the in the place where they keep the wood. Why is that? Why is so so so? Where do we have the elements of an offering, and this offering of the wood, where this offering of the wood is considered so 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 special? I'm going to read a little bit about this carbon eitzim offering of the wood. So here comes, it says, <clears throat> what was the day of the wood sacrifice? Certain families had a fixed time at which they would go out to the forest and bring wood for the pile on the altar. On the day designated for each particular family to bring their wood sacrifice, they would also bring voluntary burned F animal offerings. This occasion was called the day of the wood sacrifice. And it was celebrated as a festival for the family bringing the wood. On this day, the family was forbidden to deliver mournful eulogies because you don't eulogize on a happy day, on a Yom Tov. And the eulogies for the deceased or, or fast, and not allowed to fast in those days. And they were also not allowed to perform work on this day. This was the custom. Even a private individual, <clears throat> even a private individual who donated wood or logs for the pile on the altar was forbidden to deliver mournful eulogies for the deceased or fast. And they were also not allowed to perform work on this day. So, so whether the families or private individuals, this was the custom. So again, the question is, why was so special? What was so special about, about the woods? 
What was so special about the Buddha offerings? And not only that, the wood offerings, you know, as a matter of fact, it's very possible that they would bring the wood and it wouldn't be even used. Could be they, they would bring the offering of the wood, they make a big celebration on that day, but the temple had enough wood, so they didn't need it. So they, not, they did not even end up using the wood. Nevertheless, this was considered so special. Why, why was this so special? So there's two stories in the Medrash that will shed some light on this. Two interesting stories. I'm going to read it inside. Medrash says as follows. The king Agrippas, Agrippa, sought to offer, a, offer up a thousand all the offerings in a single day. He sent a message to the high priest saying, let no one bring any offering today except for me. And it says a, a poor man came with two tur turtle doves, doves in his hand and said to the priest, offer these up. The priest replied, the king has commanded me, let no one bring any offering today except for me. The poor man said to him, my master, high priest, I capture four every day. I offer up two and I sustain myself with two. If you do not offer them up, you will cut up, you, you will cut off my sustenance. So he took them and offered them up. What happened next? It appeared to Agrippas in his dream in a dream. In the dream, he was told that the offering of a poor person has taken precedence over yours. Those two little doves was more than the thousand, the thousand offerings, animals that he offered. He sent the message to the high priest saying, apparently he figured the dream is a real dream. And he sent the message saying to him, did I not instruct you? that no one should bring any offerings today except for me? And the high priest replied, my master, the king, a poor man came with two turtle doves in his hand and said to me, offer these up. I said to him, the king has commanded me, saying to me, let no one bring any offerings today except for me. The poor person said to me, I capture four every day. I offer up two and I sustain myself with two. If you do not offer them up, you will cut off my sustenance. Was I not to offer them up? He asked the king. And the king said to him, he said to him, everything you did, you did properly. That's one story. Then the mother says another story. There was an incident involving a woman who brought a handful of fine flour. The priest degraded her, saying, see what this woman offers up. What is there in this minimal offering that can be eaten by the priests? What is there in this minimal offering that can be offered up? So again, it appeared to the priest in a dream, do not scorn her. For it is as if she offered up her very soul. What does these two stories teach us? The king wants to do an amazing thing. He wants to do, he wants to bring an offering of a thousand animals, a thousand burnt offerings to Hashem. What happened? And that little poor man brings the two doves. And when the king was told that the two doves was more important than his thousand offerings, what did it do to the king? What did it do to him? It brought his ego down. 
Because whatever you do, the ego always has a way to get mixed up in everything you do. You can do the greatest thing, but here the ego comes in and, tell, and says, you know, you're amazing. You're, a, you're such a great guy. You did so much for Hashem, for the world. You saved people in Ukraine. You saved this, you said, did that. You're doing amazing things. Even when a person brings an offering of, of a, a chattas offering, a person commits a sin and he brings an offering, a chattas, brings a lamb, a sheep, whatever, brings to the, to the base of Mikdash, to the holy temple. And he does it with a broken heart and he asks Hashem's forgiveness. But then what happens? He, did, he does everything right. And then he sees the beautiful work, what the Kohen does. And he thinks about all the great, this great achievement, the spiritual accomplishment that he does. Reyach nichoach la Hashem, what a pleasant, pleasant aroma for Hashem. He's coming back to Hashem. And all of these great things, what does it do to him? It can bring, it can keep in a little, a little arrogance there also. The ego also gets involved. And this is what is so special about the offering of the wood offering. The wood offering, you don't have any ego involved. You bring wood, is it for you? Is it for you forgiveness? Nothing. It is just to help whoever wants to bring an offering. You should have wood to have fire on the Mizbeach, fire on the altar. And guess what? It could be that, that your wood is never going to be used. This is a, re, a very hum, a, a humbling offering. An offering that you give, but you say to yourself, it's not about me. It's not about, it's not about what I feel. It's about, about doing the right thing. I just need to do the right thing. This is the Rebbe. Says the Rebbe, the actual wood donation, the actual wood donated to, to the temple was not a sacrifice. Rather, it was a necessary element for the fire that burned at the altar, which in turn consumed the sacrifice. The actual sacrifice that burned on the wood were not the property of the wood donor. Rather, they were the property of the entire Jewish people. There is an even greater observation to, to point out that this donation was performed with a great joy. So much so that on the day that each family donated, they considered it a holiday. So this is what is special about this donation. It's the egoless giving is the greatest level of sacrifice. And that is the, the level of donation that is the basis to make this, to introduce us to sacrifices. That you first have to realize that you remove, you remove the ego from, from the whole thing. I say once there was a, a beggar going around for don asking for donations. And he sees a very house of a very wealthy person, Mr. Goldstein. He comes this 5.30 in the morning and he knocks on the door, asking for a donation. Mr. Goldstein opens up the door and he looks at the person, can I help you? He says, yes, I'm here for a donation. Can you help me out? So he looks at him and says, 5.30 in the morning? So he says to him, the beggar says to me, Mr. Goldstein, listen, I don't get, I don't get involved. The way, when you start your day, don't get, don't get mixed in, in my day. <laughs> don't tell me how to start my, how to do my work. You 
have a person giving donations, a very generous person giving people, but sometimes you have the ego. And I'm sure after such a, an incident, the ego is going down a little bit. This is the message of the, of the carbon atom. This is the message of the, of the, of the um, offering of the woods to teach us that is the egoless giving. And this really, as the Friedrich Rebbe brings down, explains that this is really the foundation and the basis of how we should serve Hashem. Working on our character and to remove the I from the picture. It's a beautiful a beautiful teachings in the Lekuti de Burim from the Friedrich Rebbe. We're going to read now. The Friedrich Rebbe says here, my grandfather, the Tzemach Tzedek, asked, what is the purpose of Hasidus? Now, my, my great-grandfather, the Tzemach Tzedek, was the third Lubavitcher Rebbe. He asked his grandfather, he asked him, what is the purpose of Hasidus? Now, my great-grandfather didn't ask what is Hasidus. For that, he obviously knew. He knew that Hasidus is a godly wisdom that is the inner working of Torah. Rather, the, his question was, what is the purpose of Hasidus? And the Alter Rebbe answered, the entire purpose of Hasidus is to change a person's character. A person's first order of work is with the I, the Ich in Yiddish, to make an honest assessment of who they are and what they are. Who am I? The correct answer is a godly soul, a share of God himself, a part of Hashem, Chelekel I am literally godliness. Therefore, thereafter, a person must know who exactly this I is. One ought to, re to really break that I, namely those matters that the ego is consumed with and what the ego wants. This particular program of introspection is akin to plowing. It burrows into the, the, the heart and breaks through the stone-like coldness of the heart. It creates the possibility to thereafter plant the seeds of work so that the person is finally able to plant good and healthy seeds. You see, this is exactly what the carbon eitzim was. The offering, the wood, was the breaking of the eye. And when you have this as a foundation, when you realize it's not about me, I give and I don't get the credit. I don't get the satisfaction. But I give because this is what, what I was created for. This is the plowing. This is the plowing. You're plowing the ground. Now you're ready to, to, to plant the seeds. Now you're ready to bring the regular offerings to achieve step by step, to elevate yourself with the, with the regular offerings in the Besam English. So now we can understand more the question that we asked before. Why is the kindness, particularly this Gmilus uh, Chasadim, why is this type of kindness a replacement for the, for the work in the Beis Amigdash? Because that's what it is. The serving, the kindness, the giving of yourself without knowing, without feeling the satisfaction, as we'll soon see how this also ties in 
with the original mitzvahs, the mitzvahs of Leket, Shikha, and Peya. In general, when it comes to kindness, mitzvah of tzedakah, the, the Maimonides talks about the different levels of, of tzedakah. The ultimate, the, first, the, the top, the top, top level is to help a person, to help a person to get up on his feet, to give a person a loan so he can start up his business, to hire a person, to give him in, a, in an honorable, honorable way to help him out. Let's see the, the, the Rambam here. Says the Rambam, the greatest level, higher than all the rest, is to fortify a fellow Jew and give him a gift of, or a loan, form a partnership with him, or find work for him until he is strong enough so that he does not need to ask others for sustenance. Of this it is said, if your kinsman being in straits comes under your authority and you hold him as though a resident alien, let him live by your side. That is, as if to say, hold him up so that he will not fall and be in need. But even deeper than that, the mitzvah of tzedakah, the giving, who does it benefit? Of course, it's to help out the person in need. But there is also a deeper understanding in the tzedakah. The whole idea that God created the world in a way that there are people who give and be people who take is in order for kindness and charity, charity to exist, to make a person a giver. This King David says, the Medrash brings down what David the Melech says. Says King David, King David said before, before God, master of the universe, let the world sit before you and you ought to even things out. Level the rich and the poor. Everybody the same. Someone can argue he was a communist. <laughs> God replied, if I were to do that, how would people ever know goodness and kindness? If all are equally poor and or rich, who would be able to do kindness? So, Hashem gave us the mitzvah of tzedakah. Yes, to help others, but also to help ourselves, to make ourselves, to train ourselves to be givers. But within the training, there is different levels of giving. Why? Because again, because the giving itself can misdirect you that you start filling the ego. And you start feeling the yourself. And that is why there is the concept of giving a higher level of giving. As the Rambam says, the gemilus chasadim, the giving, the giving of, of a loan. That's the, the highest level, not only because of the receiver that he receives his donation, his help in a, in a dignified way, but it's also for the giver. When you give a loan, you don't feel like, you know, oh, I just donated a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars to this hospital, to this foundation. No. You gave a loan, you're gonna get your money back. You didn't do much. You hire the person, yes. You're helping the person, of course you're helping the person, but you're helping yourself. You need help in your work in, in your job. 
in your business. So the ego there is a little less. And this is also the idea of the mitzvah of, of the carbon eitzim, offering of the wood. And this is also to answer the original question. When, they, when we asked about the mitzvah that is, that, is, that is written in this week's Torah portion, the verse talks about the mitzvahs of the leket and the peya, about the mitzvahs in the field that you give to the poor. And Rashi brings also the shikha, the forget, forgetting. What is different? There are many mitzvahs of giving. But what is different about these mitzvahs of giving, of the leket, the shikha and the peya, those things that in the field that when you forget, it is a giving that you can't get any ego, any satisfaction that you gave. It just happened to, you know, you lost a few bundles, a few pieces of wheat, you lost. And some and the table says, this is what you should, this is your mitzvah of tzedakah. Shikha, you forgot. You don't even know that it was the, that you gave, that someone came and took it. You, have, you forgot a bundle there. And the payer, well, how much is the payer? The, the thing that you have to leave in the side? The payer is about 1.6% that you have to leave in the side. And there is no minimal. There is no minimum amount. It could be a very small amount. And you know what else? There's also a difference between this mitzvah of giving and the other mitzvah of giving. For example, there is one of the mitzvahs of giving from the field, it's called Maiser Ani, the 10th percent that you give to the poor person. And that is something you give every three years. You give uh, every year, you give the 10% to the Levite, and every third year, you give it to the poor people. But when you give the mitzvah to the poor people, you have you have, an, uh, you have a, a right to choose who to give it to. You can give it to your brother, to your cousin, to whatever. Somebody's poor in your family. So you have the right. You have at least that satisfaction that you're giving to someone who you care for. But here in the midst of Leket, Shikha, and Peya, those are mitzvahs that the Torah says, Ta'azov, leave it alone. You don't even have the right to choose which poor people are, are come to take. So, so here again, the lack of the satisfaction. Let's see how the Rebbe sees it, says it inside. This is the Rebbe. Di ale dry mitzvahs. The common denominator between the three mitzvahs of Leket, Shikha, and Peya is not only in the sense that the donor gives away a personal item, rather the donation is quite perfect for the donor has absolutely no personal gain from it. He or she is not allowed to choose to whom to donate, to, the, the donation will go. So the, here, now we have, we, have, we have the answers. Says the Rebbe, and the Rebbe points out one more point. He says, when Rashi tells us that when you do these mitzvahs, it is considered, it doesn't say it is considered like you are bringing an offering in the temple. Rashi says, which by the way, other, other sources in the, in the Medrash, it does say as if you offer an offering. Rashi says something else. Rashi says, when you do these things, these mitzvahs is ke'ilu bana beis amikdash. It is, it is as if you build the beis amikdash. Why, 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 why does it change? Why does it talk about building the beis amikdash? Here again, it's the same idea. Because when you bring an offering, you have, still have some satisfaction. When you build the base of what do you do? You build. You're working. You're, you're a laborer. You're bringing bricks and you're building. Who are you building it to? It's not something you bring an offering that you, you will be forgiven. 
you're building a temple for the entire Jewish people, for everybody to, to be able to serve Hashem. So here again, the ego is, is gone. The ego is not there. Let's see, the Rebbe says it inside. He says, we can now understand, says the Rebbe, the precision of language in the metaphor that is quoted in, in Rashi. It says that is akin to building the temple as opposed to akin to the temple service. Constructing the temple is hard work. And the benefit is had by all Jews, as opposed to someone who offers their own personal sacrifice inside a temple, a matter of personal gain. So here is not about gain. Here is about building. Here is about giving. So what do we learn from this? Of course, the way we give, says the Rabbah, the importance of giving. And the importance of understanding that it's not about us. Of course, when it comes to helping people are in need, number one, you have to give to, for the people in need and to give as much as people need. And not only that, it is important also to make sure that other people give. give. And if some people, for them to give, will be if you put the plaque in the, in the, in the front of the building, let it be. Because the most important is to, is to help the people. And when a person sees other people give, it makes them more, to give more. But, it's, but this does not contradict what we just said. It doesn't contradict the fact that we can have also a giving and a giving in a humble way. How so? There was once um, during, a, I think it was during the Fabringen by the Rebbe. And there were, they were announcing people giving the amounts of donations for a certain project. And there came, you know, big amounts. And one of the wealthy pe people, the Rebbe asked them, no, how much? So he said to the Rebbe quietly, you know, there is this thing, there's a thing that's called matan basesa. You got to give it in a humble way you know, that nobody should know. So the Rebbe said, that's not a problem. You can just announce now a million dollars. I didn't want to just paraphrase it. He says, you can give now a certain amount. And then basesa, and quietly, you can give double. <laughs> so you have both. You can have the, the giving. You can have the giving and giving humbly. So yes, there's the mitzvah of giving, always helping, and but we have to make sure that the helping doesn't get to our heads, doesn't give us the, 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 the haughtiness on the country to do it in a humble way. It can be publicized, so other people see what you do so they can also give but in the same time with humility. And this would, as the Rebbe said, the Gedoyla Tzedakah Shemekareves Esageula, that will bring us the Geula very soon. Amen. Thank you for joining. Don't forget to share this, subscribe, let other people enjoy this uh, benefit of this Torah.